Hey there everyone, my name is Luke and welcome to my channel. I hope that you'll join me tonight as I'm going to do something just a little bit different to what I usually find myself doing over on this channel. So oftentimes, for anybody who's been a long time viewer, you'll know that I tend to focus on astrophotography alone. And while there's nothing wrong with that, I also personally really do enjoy doing something a little bit different every now and again. So that's what we're going to be doing now. It's going to actually be an entire session focused on EAA, that is Electronically Assisted Astronomy. So I've already gone ahead and picked out a bunch of different targets today. I put pen to paper using Stellarium as my guide and uh, basically chose a bunch of different things that I'd like to visit throughout the course of this session. And hopefully, if the weather holds, we're going to make our way through all of those in order. I'll put those up on the screen for you in just a moment so you can see what to expect throughout this. Uh, but basically, as you can see, I'm already off to a start as well. I'm shooting M16 right now and I've got 30 minutes of exposure and I'm actually going to have to change targets in just a moment if I want to get through all of these. So before we get into it, I'm going to take you now through the equipment which I'm using. So very basically, it is my typical astrophotography setup. Uh, I'm just repurposing it for EAA tonight. So it's going to be the Celestron Rasa 8. That's an F2 reflecting telescope. Really fast, really sharp, great for this purpose. The camera I'm using is actually a pretty much a perfect accompaniment for this kind of thing. It's the Player One Uranus C. That's a one-shot color camera from Player One. It's uncooled, but it also gives incredible quality for a really quite unbeatable price, in my opinion. The filter that I'm using throughout this entire session, as I won't be swapping things around, is just going to be an IDAS NBZ UHS. That is simply a duo narrowband filter, which lets through just hydrogen and oxygen wavelengths, as all of the targets which I picked out for earlier today are all nebula, uh, emission nebula rather. So it's going to be a great fit for each and every one of those. Now, uh, basically, as you can see, I'm already shooting M16 and I'm actually nearly done with this. I've been really enjoying just watching this build up over the course of the past 30 minutes or so. I think it's probably just about hitting the observatory wall now though, so it's time to move on to the next target in the list. It seems like we're going to get through these in uh, rapid fashion. So next up, I want to actually shoot M27, the Dumbbell Nebula, as that's the next planned target. But I am also going to be displaying the final images of these with just very light editing that's in keeping with the spirit of EAA on the screen for you guys to appreciate also so uh now that that's said i think all that's left to do is end this stack and slew away to the next target right then guys so as we're about to slew away to the next target in just a moment which is going to be m27 the dumbbell nebula i think this is the perfect opportunity to show you how i'm actually going to be doing this tonight so as you can see i'm using sharp gap for the main purposes of stacking and dithering my exposures to make sure that i'm not getting too much correlated noise building up in these exposures and it seems to have done a great job on this first shot here of m16 that's looking i think really rather nice for uh, an image made up of 15 second exposures even through a t fast telescope but to actually do the plate solving, aligning and auto focusing as I don't want to be getting up and putting a batting off mask on the end of the telescope and things like that. I've actually got everything also hooked up to Nina at the same time. So I'm going to go ahead and end this live stack right now. So I'm going to close that down just a moment and open up Nina, the main page on there. And I'm going to go over to the framing wizard and type in M27. So once I've done that, I can select it, load the image. It's going to pop up on the screen. And now I can go ahead and hit slew and center. And it's actually going to take me from where I was pointed at M16 and go through the whole process of getting me plate soft and aligned to that target using my main imaging camera, the Uranus C for this. So we should see in just a moment, if I open the imaging tab here, it should actually start to find M27. Uh, I'll just keep this live so you guys can see how this is working. So right there you can see it's got m27 on the screen but not yet centered so after a little bit of a settle period and a slew to correct that it should hopefully get itself realigned properly it's exposing currently five second exposures for these plate solves it looks like it's perfectly aligned in the center now and hopefully nina will agree and i think it is a success looking at this there we go 
So the next thing to do now, rather than, as I mentioned, getting up and manually focusing things, is instead I'm just going to click Start or Autofocus. So I'm going to let it run and autofocus for each one of these targets. It only takes perhaps two, two and a half minutes to run through, and it will ensure that I've got my best chance at getting the crispest, sharpest observations possible of these objects from my location. So uh, I'm going to watch this as I like to actually see the autofocus happen and as this v-curve forms i can correlate that with visual information i'm just seeing with my eyes on the screen and see if the autofocus is going to be accurate or not and i am happy to say it seems to be dialed in pretty well and i agree with its results each time but still this is just one of those things where if you want to spend the extra time doing this you absolutely can and it's sometimes really uh, quite nice to see that your equipment's working as it should rather than working against you as oftentimes it can so uh, we're going to let this autofocus routine just finish and um, I think we'll pick up in just a second more over on the main screen on sharp gap all right guys so as you can see we're picking back up now it's just finished this autofocus routine and I'm happy to say that from what I could see at least visually it's put itself back to the point of sharpest focus, which is obviously what you're looking for with an automated focusing system like this. Now, all I've gone ahead and done is opened up the equipment tab, deselected the player one camera from Nina and reselected it over here in SharpCap now. So just effectively reconnected the camera and let SharpCap take command of that camera control once again. I've renamed my new live stack, so M27. And at this point, I can just hit live stack, clear the old one off, and wait for these first few exposures to come in and make sure everything's stacking up properly and nothing's really uh, gone awry. And then at that point, it's just a case of appreciating the image on the screen as it builds up over the course of time. So um, it looks like we need some minor adjustments, so I'm just going to use the auto color balance. You could use the auto stretch, but I find it to be maybe a little bit hyper aggressive so instead i prefer to just bring up the black point to the base also of that histogram mound and then bring across the mid level over to the left towards that black point to get a bit of a basic stretch happening so that's looking pretty good on the screen i'll just zoom it up a little bit and yeah really that's looking fantastic for 45 seconds of exposure We've already got those kind of winged extensions that you can see sometimes in a really deep image of M27. They're actually starting to appear in my image right now by one minute, which is uh, just testament really to the sensitivity of that player one and the speed of that Rasa. So uh, fingers crossed this one's going to look impressive as it builds up. And um, once this is finished, I think we're going to give this maybe... 20 25 minutes of observation or so depending on how we're doing for time throughout this night and then we're going to move on to the western veil vale nebula sometimes called the witcher's broom and it's effectively going to be that same process once again where we'll finish this live stack open up nina and get it lined up using uh, the framing tool so uh, in this case i'll just take you through it really quickly so you've got the concept again ngc 6960 is what i wrote down ngc 6960 select that load the image and it'll bring me up right there if you're not happy really with that frame which i think that would perhaps look a little bit better drag the box wherever the hell you like it and just hit slew and center and effectively it's going to take over and do the rest but before you do that you must of course reconnect the camera so it can effectively play it solve but in the meantime it's time to just appreciate this object for what it is so uh, i'm gonna watch this build up for a while now all right then guys so we're now about 23 minutes actually into this dumbbell nebula stack and i think it's time we finished this target but before we do let's take a little bit of a final look just at it here so if we go to a hundred percent zoom we can see it's really picked up those faint extensions now on the uh, the outer edges of that actual it looks a bit more like a butterfly i think kind of formation i'm dead impressed actually i think doing this bit of eaa tonight already has made me really appreciate the speed of the rasa and the low noise performance actually of this uranus c it's uh 
a pretty magical combo, actually, uh, as far as things go. And um, I'm just dead impressed. I can't wait to see now what it's going to perform like on the next target, which, as we spoke about, is going to be the Witcher's Broom. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and just save this now as a 16-bit stack so I can make a few final little touch-ups, perhaps, if needed, uh, to present it to you guys during, throughout the course of this video, basically. Uh, so I'm going to end that live stack. That's finished. I'll unselect the camera from sharp gap and reconnect it back up in nina we're just going to go through once again that setup procedure so over onto the framing tab we've already got it aligned and loaded up so i'm going to hit slew and center i can just hear now the, uh, the scope is slewing it's almost finished i think it's not had to move too far as the dumbbell and the veil are not that far from one another in the night sky for us um go over to the imaging tab and we can just take a quick peek on the screen see if it's picking it up sure enough there it is smack in the position where i chose it might actually get this in just one solve and uh i'm actually going to trust that it won't need a refocus on this because we haven't moved very far across the night sky it's, it has actually just decided it's not within tolerance so it's done another small movement there we go if everybody watching the screen just then you'll have seen it move just a little bit and I think it's surely got to be happy at that. And it is. So now that's all aligned again. I could just unselect the uh, the camera from Nina over here. Reopen it once again over in Sharp Cap. As you can see, it's already picked up the fact that I've got that flat frame that I took right at the start, which was my only setup for this session. And now we can wait for this first 15 second exposure to come in. So. Uh, while we're doing that, I'll just rename the next stack so it can start another subfolder. So NGC 6960 West Fail. That'll do. That's going to make sense for me. It looks good on the screen. And I think with that, we can just hit Live Stack, reset the other stack, and uh, wait for this to actually build up. So. Uh, all I'm doing at this point, once I've actually refreshed a stack, is I'm just going to keep an eye on it for just a few frames uh, and make sure that everything is stacking up as intended. Because sometimes, let's say if you're filtering by full width half max like I am here, depending on the size of the stars in the field of view, it can throw this off just a little bit and uh, you may need to adjust it slightly per target if you've used uh, this setting quite aggressively, which I haven't, so I should be okay most of the time. But it looks like the filters are working fine on brightness and full width half max. I'm going to set guiding back off as um, I forgot to do that. So it's picked itself a good star. We'll just hit go. Guiding's going okay tonight, I would say. Nothing too uh, stellar. But importantly, <laughs> it's all working fine. Uh, it looks like this is stacking up lovely actually already. This is just 45 seconds of exposure. And if I just alter the black point there slightly, increase this mid-level for a bit of a stretch. And there it is, the Witcher's Broom in one minute. And it looks fantastic on the screen. If we just bring this zoom up just a little bit, you can see that really interesting filamentary kind of structure in, in the Witcher's Broom there. Uh, it looks to kind of fold over itself a few times. Uh, it's an amazing target and I think it's one of those that perhaps deserves a bit of a revisit and maybe a proper shoot uh, using astrophotography techniques, perhaps. Um, one other thing you may notice when looking at this, if you're unfamiliar with uh, RASA type telescopes, that actually puts the camera in front of the main optic, which is well, it, it has to go there as part of the design, but it inevitably leads to some odd diffraction, which is what you're seeing here, this kind of offset X. So it's not like spider vein diffraction that you'd see on a Newtonian, where it'd be traditionally um, like an X or a cross pattern like that, perfectly centered, 90 degrees each segment. This is instead caused by the cables going into the camera. So uh, you can hide these using like curved cable uh, routers, but I just don't mind that much. It doesn't bother me too much. So uh, I'm just going to leave it as is. I thought it was interesting to mention, though. Um, that kind of diffraction is something you'll never see, interestingly, on uh, unobstructed designs such as uh, refractors. And you also see it lessened 
on, on ob semi-obstructed designs, I like to call them, like uh, a Cassegrain telescope, like the Schmidt Cassegrain that I use for planetary, as that thing's secondary mirror is held in place by a piece of glass, so there's nothing uh, really there to cause too much diffraction except for the secondary mirror itself and its housing. But anyway, I've gone on and on too long, I'm probably boring you all half to death now, but again, I'm just going to watch this build up now over the course of the next maybe 20 minutes or so before moving on to the Eastern Veil Nebula, that's up next, and uh, I hope you'll enjoy seeing these images. Well, we're about 19 minutes into this target now, and I have to say it's coming along incredibly well. This has been a bit of an eye-opener for me, I think, um, as to just how beautiful this target really, really is. I've been sat here appreciating this for the past uh, 10 minutes or so, and it just keeps on getting better with every added frame. Looking at this now, I think um, if this is what effectively 20 minutes looks like i can only imagine what 20 hours might look like if i was willing to put that sort of time into this as um there's so much split between the signal in this one so you can really cleanly see the oxygen component that kind of tealy blue color uh completely cleanly split from the hydrogen component of this which makes it really interesting to view uh, i guess part of the reason for that is because of the nature of this object it's not um your traditional type of nebula it's actually a supernova remnant an snr which is what's giving it these kind of shock wavy uh rippled effect i guess but whatever's caused it it really makes for an impressive show as you can see there's kind of like these barrel curls going on in some segments of this uh oxygen 3 signal which looks just fantastic to see all of the filaments are incredible and what's interesting to note as well i think is as this um stacks developed over the course of as i said the past 20 minutes now um there's also some background oxygen and hydrogen that's started to become visible just um up here behind the actual main witch's broom i hope this is coming up for you guys there on youtube but there's actually a fair bit of it visible that i never really realized was there now hopefully you can see this ras is doing an incredible job and um not to kind of toot my own horn or anything but if I'd have spent a week getting an image like this back when I started astrophotography, uh, I'd have been extremely happy with the time spent. But the gear that I've got now, and I'm able to do this in 20 minutes, it's absolutely mind-boggling just how far things have came on in the past, well, eight years or so since I got started. Um, it's incredible. This actually... <laughs> it... it it really builds my excitement for targets. I, I can almost use sessions like this doing EAA as a bit of a reconnaissance session for want of a better explanation for this. So by going through this list of targets tonight, I'm going to see a multitude of things which I otherwise would have to invest a bunch of time shooting all in one session. And I can pick out from that with fresh knowledge of how my individual system reacts to these targets. And I can see that this is one of them where I think it is worth a revisit and more time uh, spent on it, which is what I alluded to earlier. But yeah, I'm going to go ahead now and hit save on this, as I think that's gone on long enough at this point, 21 and a half minutes. It looks incredible. I'll close down that live stack, and I think we'll just go through once more. I'll show you this just once more. The process uh, of actually picking out these targets and using Nina to your advantage even for a session of EAA with Sharp Gap uh, as it really takes out a lot of the stress of kind of finding your target on the screen. I know some people might find that fun but I personally don't. Well, now I've got used to plate solving I've grown too lazy for it so uh, yeah next up is going to be NGC 6992 so NGC 6992 We'll just go ahead and click it just like we did all the others. It'll load that up, and as you can see, it's a little bit decentered from where the actual nebula is placed. So I guess that's the named part of the nebula, just this kind of knotted segment over there. But we want to get the whole thing, I'd say. So that looks like a reasonably good framing. So I'm going to hit slew and center. And before it manages that, I'm going to actually connect the camera up and disconnect it from sharp gap a second 
so it's not going to get confused and try sending signals to one and not the other uh, as it can do that i've had that actually happen earlier on in this session just when i was initially setting up so it is better to connect to one program at a time i find but as you can see just there in the plate solving window if you go over to the imaging one it might show it a little bit better but it's got this plate solved done in one movement by the looks of things and i'm going to trust that it's still in focus as we haven't moved very far in the night sky to get from one side of the uh, veil nebula to the other so i won't run an, an autofocus again at this point i'll just uh instead disconnect the camera as i mentioned you should reconnect it in sharp cap as simple as that just connecting it up and while we're waiting for that first uh frame to come in i'll just rename the next stack so 6992 oops there we go and uh at that now when i start a new fresh live stack it's going to create that in a new subfolder which will keep everything nice and simple for me for later on processing it so as i mentioned i'm just going to spend the first couple of frames right now watching them come in and stack make sure everything's working properly which hopefully fingers crossed it seems to be just looking at this 30 seconds that looks really promising already i have to say I'm really amazed at what this gear is uh, is capable of doing. I'll just hit for color balance at this point. That looks really neutral now in the background, a nice neutral gray. We'll start making a black level adjustment just to get it somewhere in the ballpark before I leave it to stack now. And I can kind of just go into a, a hands-free appreciation mode for this. So uh, that looks like a pretty good stretch and already there's so much filament and detail I, I think this is another one i'm gonna have to give full marks a plus plus i really need to revisit this target i think uh down the line and make a proper shot of it anyway i'm gonna watch this now for uh, maybe the next 20 minutes or so and then we'll move on to the next target which is going to be the crescent nebula as it happens so i'll catch up with you soon Well, we're 19 minutes into this stack of the Veil Nebula now, and I have to say, once again, it's one of those targets that I'm really glad that I've visited because it's just been blowing my socks clean off as this one uh, in particular. The amount of filamentary detail and structure to this thing is insane to see, especially as it's been building up from that kind of sort of noisy single uh, couple frames to this at this point now, which is looking almost like a finished image you know what i mean uh we're seeing these amazing contrasty regions of hydrogen in this background one of the segments that i especially keep finding myself drawn to is just down here so i'll just center it up on the screen and zoom in a little bit further we're going to go a little bit extra here to a 200 percent view but there's kind of a knot of hydrogen and oxygen all seemingly swirling together right there and that is it just looks ferocious to see there must be so much energy in that region right there there's these huge streams of oxygen just leaving it and this great big glow uh, of that hydrogen there and it's just eye-catching and had i not been staring at the image and appreciating it as it's kind of developed i don't think i'd have really noticed it actually uh, so i am glad again uh, that i've spent the time to look at this one so i've really enjoyed it i think it's time now to move on to the next target which again as i mentioned is going to be the crescent nebula i've already gone ahead and got that just lined up and effectively ready to start plate solving over in nina once i uh, do the camera swap trick so i think i'm going to go ahead and do that just now but before i uh, i do that i am going to make sure to hit save on this one as unfortunately just checking out what data i'd actually captured um i made a bit of a boo-boo i forgot to save the eagle nebula data from earlier on tonight but it's no big deal. You could still see it on the screen, I'm sure, as part of the video. Uh, it's just I won't be able to show you a proper image of that one. But it is what it is. We all make mistakes. And uh, I'm not going to let it bother me anymore. So, anyway, with that said, I'm going to now move away to the, uh, the Crescent Nebula. And we'll start a new stack on that. And I'll catch up with you all in probably about 20 more minutes. All right, so here we are, we're on the Crescent Nebula, and as you can see, we're 18 minutes and 30 seconds deep into this particular stack. 
And once again, the Rasa and this Player One camera are really performing fantastically well together. And uh, that filter has let me see everything that I need to on this type of target. I'm just really impressed and quite honestly, a bit humbled that I've got access to such incredible gear to do this kind of thing with. I feel extremely fortunate indeed. Um, as I mentioned previously, it's actually, it doesn't seem like that long ago in my mind that I'd have been happy with this kind of thing as a finished image, but now I'm seeing it as part of an EAA routine and it, it's just mind boggling really to appreciate just how far technology has come along in the past few years and uh, the actual quality of optics that I've got my access to these days as well. Um, again, as I said, I'm an extremely fortunate chap, but not to dwell on that too much. I just thought it was time we took a little bit of a look at this target. So, um, yeah, with 19 minutes and 30 seconds now on the clock, you can see an absolute bunch of background hydrogen just over to this side here. Um, the rest of it's just got seemingly very few... Uh, photons hitting it so uh for want of a better word to describe that one it just seems to be a very faint background wall of hydrogen nebulosity uh, i remember now that i should have framed this slightly differently because i would have liked to capture the soap bubble nebula which is just off the screen down here effectively where it probably roughly where it says status there on that uh live stacking bar but again no matter it doesn't really make a difference because can always reshoot this target uh, properly with either an EAA approach again or uh, an astrophotography approach and try and go super super deep as it's probably been about a year since I actually really shot this the last time I did it was with my Esprit 120 and ASI 2600 camera combo and that made a nice shot but I think this potentially could make an even nicer one uh, given the right conditions anyway I've gone ahead now and got myself prepared for the next target so I'm going to hit save on this one as we're just approaching 21 minutes actually and that's a bit more than I wanted to do uh, but the next two targets are actually segments of the sky which I've shot recently as part of my uh, astrophotography videos so it's going to be the pelican and the cygnus wall shot individually as I don't have the field of view to do both just yet so we're going to do the pelican first I've got it lined up and ready to go. As you can see, I'm going to go with this kind of framing using Nina. So I'm going to get some of that background dust that's visible in that region. And um, we're just going to spend a little bit less time maybe on these segments as they are very bright. So they won't need much exposure. And um, yeah, I think then we'll move on to uh, probably after I've done those two, the Wizard Nebula next up after them. So uh, I'm going to catch up with you all probably about 15 minutes time but for you it'll be just a few seconds Well guys, if my plan just went well, uh, hopefully you should have just seen on the screen there this image actually developing over the course of the, well for you a few seconds, but for me about 12 minutes or so. I just thought it might have been interesting to try and show visually on screen um, in a very condensed way the impact of these frames all stacking together and kind of that increase in signal to noise um, ratio. It was interesting to actually watch occur while well, I've just been uh, doing a few other things there and talking to Chloe but I have to say uh, once again I know I keep going over this same point but I really am desperately impressed by uh, by this rig and its capabilities I think this um, little session of EAA, EAA here has really reminded me of what this thing is capable of and also what astronomy is all about really for me at least uh, I've really enjoyed this session so far and I'm just looking forward to moving on to the next target and the next target and so forth even though this is something very recently that I just shot um, anyway so I'm going to cut this particular stack short at about 15 minutes I think as uh, again like I said I'm just going over already trod ground then I'll move on to uh, the Cygnus wall 
again recently a video covering that one shot in astrophotography style but um could still be interesting just to see what it looks like with 15 second exposures so uh, yeah gonna save this out right now and go ahead and get everything aligned up again on nina and uh see what we can do on this next stack Well, we're just about to hit 16 minutes and we just have, I think, there on this stack. And I have to say once again, I'm sorry for keeping saying this, but, you know, it's blowing me away. It looks really, really good for just over a quarter of an hour. I've got absolutely no complaints. Um, just as I were kind of watching this stack develop there off camera, um, I was just thinking to myself, I can really appreciate that there's a lot of people out there who solely focus on EAA and I can absolutely see why after a session like tonight I mean um, I've done EAA before a good few times in the past and I always enjoy it but um, I partic particularly feel like this RASA and this approach for using these narrowband kind of filtration has really upped the game for me uh, quite a lot as it's letting me see things I never could visually uh, without the kind of time investment that astrophotography approaches take and yet still with I think really rather nice results I mean if you just zoom in on this just a little bit and take another look all the way down this wall uh, the, all the main features are there everything's captured um, sure it's a bit noisier than you know an, a fully stacked hours and hours long astrophotography image would be excuse me but you know it didn't take hours it took <laughs> just above a quarter of an hour and uh, if all you want to do is just appreciate what's out there and take a look around the night sky this is unbeatable i'd say i'm really having a lot of fun tonight so i think anyway that is enough time on this particular target now as i mentioned i have recently shot it so we're going to move on now to the last two targets. So I'll just take this one off and we're moving now onto the wizard. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and get that set up as I've showed you that setup uh, procedure a few times over now. So I won't punish you <laughs> by making you sit through it once more. Um, and we'll just catch up again in probably about another 10 or 15 minutes. Well, here we are back again and uh, yet another update on a, a target almost completed. So uh, we're currently at just about 18 minutes actually on the Wizard Nebula here. And uh, I have to say I've enjoyed watching this one develop. Uh, I've just been keeping one eye on it while I've been sat here, kind of just relaxing mostly to be honest with you. Um, but yeah, it's, it's been an interesting target to watch in particular as this one because I feel like perhaps even more than most of the other targets tonight that I've uh, spent some time observing. This one has a bit of a three-dimensional um, effect to it. So you can really see that it looks like this frontal um, segment of the nebula is closer to you. And this background kind of um, veil of hydrogen is hanging there and where the kind of wizard's hand is that's outstretched like that. You can see that sort of mid-ground in this shot going out to the furthest edge of the nebula. It's uh, Maybe I'm imagining it and maybe it's almost flat onto us, but it really does look three-dimensional to me. Uh, I'd love to hear what you guys think. Uh, if you've made it this far in the video, then thank you very much indeed for sticking with this one. I realise it's been a little bit of a different um, type of video. No... Uh, special attention paid to flashy edits or anything like that it's more just a case of enjoying a little session uh together which is really what it's all about at the end of the day so i'm going to save this out in just a moment now and move on to my last target of my uh 
observing list actually it's just going to be ngc 7822 so uh I don't think that one has a particular name. Like all these other ones that I've picked have actually got like recognizable names. That one doesn't. But all the same, it's an interesting segment of the night sky and well worthy of some observation time. So uh, that said, I'm just going to let this last frame come in right now to take this up to 19 and a half minutes. Save that out. And uh, once again, I'm going to go through the process of getting lined up. I think as this is the last one and maybe some of you guys watching this video might have missed this earlier on in the night, I will show you how I do uh, this process. So I've saved that out. Once again, untick my uh, my camera from SharpCap, open it back up in Nina, move over to the framing wizard and enter the name of the target which I'm going for, which in this case is NGC7822. Populate that and hit load image. It's going to load you in on exactly where the kind of name uh, is is bound to effectively but i don't want that particular segment i actually want i'd say that's going to do nicely so we're going to get all these interesting little spires and such and a lot of that background um dusty formations in so i'm going to choose that area hit slew and center sorry again if you've Kind of watched all of this video and you've seen me do this now for about the fourth time uh, i just thought i'd leave this one last plate solving there for anybody who might have missed it on the uh, earlier parts of the video skipping through or whatever but yeah all that we do now is we just wait a few moments it's going to plate solve this and get itself perfectly aligned with what i've just asked it to we should see that appearing on the screen uh any moment really actually it should settle as long as my guy didn't hasn't caused issues. Yeah, that's fine. Ah, it appears it's actually decided to do a, a meridian flip, so it's still slewing. I guess that's why it's taking so long to reach this target now. So um, once it has plate solved, I will go ahead and do a an autofocus, as I like to do that after the telescope's moved a long way in the night sky, or if like an hour has passed or so. Here we go, it's getting itself roughly aligned now, you can see in this plate solve window and the image preview. And if we just give it a moment, because it's definitely not aligned perfectly yet. As we're just seeing there, telescope not inside tolerance, said in the bottom left. And that looks an awful lot closer, I think that's probably it. Um, we'll just wait to see if Nina closes the plate solving window. So it says it's not inside tolerance once again. All right, so it's actually taken a few uh, attempts there to get this plate solved properly, this particular target. I'm not exactly sure why, but it doesn't really matter. So uh, now that it has actually put it where I asked it, the next thing I'm gonna do is hit autofocus. In my case, I like to use an autofocuser. And I'm just gonna manually pan with a one-to-one -one view of this window and just keep an eye on the autofocus routine not that you should have to do this but it's just for my own peace of mind to make sure that it's focusing as accurately as it can what i like to do is watch as the v curve is being generated on the right hand side of the image on this graph panel right there i'm also looking at the image on the left the preview window and just as it takes each exposure i'll kind of just mentally make a note and say that looks sharper that looks softer so we can see you know that is sharper than the last one and that's reflected in the v-curve right there so the next exposure is going to come in and we'll do that same thing make a decision that looks sharper and it's represented again in that curve so we can see it's analyzing the stars correctly which is of course really important to getting good autofocus performance um that looked a little bit sharper and it looks like that could either be my eyes or ever so slightly a disagreement um with the autofocuser it looks like it's doing a pretty darn good job anyway um we'll just wait for it to finish up and then once again it's just literally a case of unticking the equipment um in this case just the camera reopening it in sharp cap and setting it off with a, a live stack and that's effectively my version of eaa so um once it's done that, I'm going to pick up with you guys again when the stack is almost finished and we'll uh, we'll finish up there. 
All right then guys, so here we are. We are 22 and a half minutes deep into NGC 7822. The final target on my list. We've managed to get everything done effectively all in this one session. Um, we have got a bit of wispy cloud blowing through now, so it's probably the end of the night. But what a night it's been. All in, I would say. So I've really enjoyed watching this one develop uh, as well. So we'll take a look at this now. Um, just go to 100% view for a second. You can see there's a lot of detail in these uh, little like spires and such of nebulosity and gas and dust. And it's really interesting to see. Um, I don't know if it's just me that kind of picks up things that look almost recognizable. Um, like this little segment here almost looks like, uh, you know, an Oscars statue? Looks like someone's turned one of those <laughs> on side to me and as it's facing away from you. Maybe my imagination's running a little bit wild there, but um, it'd be interesting to see if any of you guys out there can see it. In the rest of this, though, uh, these kind of knots and little whips of nebulosity that's hanging around in this region, I think it's interesting to note that it looks like this particular star right here seems to be uh, an actual part of this nebula. It looks like maybe some sort of stellar winds uh, forming this particular spike right there. Maybe I'm completely wrong. Uh, I don't know the history of this nebula or any research that's been done on it. It's just, it looks to me like it's perfectly aligned with that star. Like the, as I said, the stellar winds are kind of blowing that dust away from whatever's there um, or shaping it in that kind of spike. It's odd to see anyway, but it's really interesting because it gives objects like this a, a depth that you can really appreciate, I think. Um, it's hard to wrap your mind around the distances and sizes involved but I feel like we can sometimes grasp um, at least shape a little bit better even on these vast scales but anyway I think I've blabbed on quite long enough we've had a really successful night and this is the last target of the night so I've got everything done that I wanted to do and so with that said I'm probably going to wrap things up here and uh, go ahead and get everything packed away soon so um I hope that you've enjoyed this video. I know it's probably been a little bit boring for some of you guys out there, but I also, on the other hand, know that some people will appreciate this kind of video. Uh, a little bit easygoing, uh, a looser format kind of thing, rather than heavily edited. So, um, anyway, I have enjoyed myself, and I really genuinely do hope that you have too. And I'd just like to say, as always, thank you so much for watching, and I appreciate each and every one of you guys out there. I really do. And uh, with that said, anyway, I think that's probably about it. So I'm going to show all the images I've captured at the end, just with very minimal editing in the spirit of EAA and not so much astrophotography. So I'm going to leave it there. And uh, thanks so much for watching. And until next time, guys, look after yourselves and clear skies.